It was a while ago that Amanda's Epoxy 7219 left a comment on a video saying, hey Jack, how about baking in glass? And I said something along the lines of, I've never done it, it gives me the willies. And it does, but I'll do it for you. Hey home bakers in a professional kitchen, you don't bake in glassware, you don't do anything in glassware, you don't do anything in glass, you don't even drink out of a glass, there's zero glass present in the kitchen because if you dropped it and smashed it, basically be game over to anything you're making that day, it's just not worth the risk. That's why I've never tried this until now. For Amanda and for all of you, I've scoured the globe for the finest glassware money can buy. First up, we're gonna try this. Not this, or that. This. Glass loaf tins. Do you call this a tin? It's not made out of tin, you can't call it a tin. Americans would call it a pan, wouldn't they? It's not a pan, like a pan is in the UK. This is a pan. Let's call it a dish from here on in, because I don't know. There are two reasons why I was drawn to these particular glass loaf dishes like a hungry man on a baguette. Firstly, my classic Loaf tins don't exist anymore. So I've been trying this one out and actually I quite like it, but we'll come back to this another time. The point is, it's pretty much the same size. See that? Yeah. And secondly, because of the pictures included in the listing to sell this, they were absolute masterpiece. I mean, just look, this and this. Seriously, I put a lot of work into my product photography in the Baker Jack shop, but clearly I don't need to because these led me to want to purchase not one, but two. Uh, the reason I got two is because I didn't really know what to do with these. Normally I bake in a non-stick tin or a seasoned tin, or I might grease a tin if it's looking a bit dodgy, but I didn't know whether I was supposed to grease them or not. So I did two loaves and I greased one of them and I didn't grease the other one. No prizes for guessing uh, which one stuck. So I made my loaves of bread as normal shake them up and put them in these uh, loaf glass dishes in the same way that I would do in a loaf tin. And I proved them up in there and I baked them both in there. And what I learned the most is that these are heavy. Uh, and now I look back on it, I realize it's obvious. They're heavy, so the heat would take longer to penetrate through this as it would do uh, the thin tin. So what I should have done in hindsight is given them an extra 10 minutes or so in the oven because when they came out they were very very steamy and I did know that when I took them out of the oven but had a lot of bread to bake that day I needed to get them out so I could move on to the next one before it puffed up too much. So uh, you can tell by the footage that one of the loaves came out quite well and that was the one that was greased and the other one didn't come out very well at all partly because I didn't grease it and also because uh, theoretically, it was underbaked, meaning it was kind of too moist inside and underneath. When these tins get really hot on the edge, yeah, and the edge is in contact with the bread, it kind of, imagine it kind of sizzling away the moisture. That's what happens in my head. With these being heavier, with a kind of slower heat getting from the outside to the inside, there is kind of no sizzle and it's more of like a gentle bake where the steam and the moisture will kind of naturally build up in there. Looking back, baking them hotter would have helped and baking them for five, 10 minutes longer would have also helped. I left the one I hadn't buttered inside to allow the steam to make it kind of soft and then with gentle coaxing with a knife slid down the side, which I never do by the way and always recommend that you don't either. I was able to get the loaf out where I could clearly see it should have been baked a little bit longer. Upon cutting the loaves inside, it looks like bread. I know I don't cut it and show you the inside of the loaf and everyone's gonna kick off and be about and go, Oi, where's that crumb shot I wanna see inside? Look like bread inside, of course it would do. It's the same, it's just bread, it's the same bread. A little bit moist, a little bit tacky as if you'd underbaked a loaf by five, 10 minutes, but no big deal. Something to note with these is they are incredibly impractical. I mean, look at the size of them. They're kind of heavy, they take up a lot of space in your cupboards, and they don't even stack properly. So, you know, think about that when you want to buy these. Incidentally, everything that you see here, all this glassware, will be given away uh, in a giveaway on Patreon. So all of you patrons, if you want to be in a chance of winning these, Keep your eye on the Patreon uh, feed for a competition coming up soon. Next up is the glass Pyrex dish, the likes of which my mum used to use to make a cottage pie inside. A pack of crisps smashed up on the top for that crispy, crunchy cheese and onion topping. Uh, I was on the fence about buying this, but I wanted to get something with a lid uh, for reasons we'll go into in a bit. One of the reviews uh, was one star and it said, arrived smashed, never buy anything glass off the internet, which I thought was quite amusing. But hey, I took the risk, you know me. 
I like a bit of danger. If you've been here for a while, you will understand the Dutch oven principle. The Dutch oven principle is the principle of baking in a small contained environment, like a Dutch oven, for example. One sec. Oh, it's heavy. This is a uh, big cast iron casserole dish, Dutch oven, whatever you want to call it. You can call it Dutch oven. Technically it's not, it's just a casserole dish, but it's deep and it's got a lid. And if you bake stuff inside of it, the steam of the bread itself will be encased inside. And so therefore allow our bread to rise up to its potential and get that big, massive increase in volume and big burst on the top. Ah. See? Heavy. I've seen people use these for the same thing. If they've got one in the cupboard, they're like, mate, don't get Dutch oven, just use this thing that you keep for your cottage pies. Lasagna, anyone make a lasagna in there? Why? I don't know, why not? Effectively, the Dutch oven um, principle allows us to uh, kind of create the conditions that a baker would in a baker's oven in their oven at home, because our oven's not designed for bread. It's a big, massive, empty space tin box, whereas a baker's oven, it's got that big, heavy heat storing base and is short and squat with very little air room around the bread, uh, allowing the steam injection and the actual steam from the bread itself to steam the bread up and make it rise up real nice. So then I upturned this little lid piece so I could bake on top of it and lined it with a parchment paper cartouche. Yeah. Then with this bottom piece turned up over the top of it, we can kind of create this proving chamber if you will, and also see what's going on inside, which is pretty neat. Before baking, I slashed the top swiftly with a grignette and a little spritz of water to encourage that steam to build up before I loaded it into the oven. And then our Dutch oven principle played out to perfection, allowing our loaf to rise up nice and big during that first 20 minute bake with the lid on, only removing the lid for the second 20 minutes to get that nice crispy crust and golden color. The reason I did it in the lid instead of in the base was so that when I took the top off, they would all be exposed to the heat. Instead of, if you think about this base, being in the deep base, it's got all the sides here, less of it would be exposed being in the bottom of this deep base. So if you're buying one for that purpose, make sure you get one without a knob on the top. Some have got like a handle, like a kalosh. Is that what they're called? If it's flat, you can use the base to bake on and you can put this on the top. I mean, if you've got one, use it. It works and you can look inside and see what's going on. That's quite exciting in itself, isn't it? Because we all know that when we're baking our bread at home, watching it rise in the oven is better than watching the TV. Now you might be thinking for a minute, hold on, Jack. When I bake inside of my Dutch oven, I like to preheat it first. Can one do that with a glass baking receptacle as well? And the answer is yes, of course you can, yeah. Why not? So then comes our third uh, article of glass. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I've lost it, totally lost it. This is the same as the other one, but it's a rectangle. Can you actually see this? Or is it like a ghost casserole dish? It's invisible to the naked eye. Baking in glass makes me feel odd inside, like it's unsafe, like I don't like it. It goes against every fiber of my being and natural instinct that I hold inside of my very heart and soul. Putting glass into the oven with nothing in it to preheat, is off the charts. There is part of my heart and mind that thinks to myself, what if this explodes into shrapnel pieces and they embed themselves in my eyeballs forevermore? Like I'm sure it wouldn't happen because people put jars and stuff in the oven and bake them, don't they, for like sterilization? But I can't help it. I'm sure it wouldn't, but I can't help feeling that way. This one I used for a long loaf. I kind of wanted to make a long loaf and prove it up in a banneton basket the same way as you would do a sourdough. And all these breads that you've seen today, by the way, was just a straight up yeasted bread dough. No frills, no nothing. You can get great results with yeasted bread dough, whether you do it in a tin, whatever that is, something with a lid on, stone baking, whatever. I wanted to kind of do this one as if I was stone baking it, prove it up in the Banneton basket. Then I pulled my uh, preheated Dutch oven very, very carefully with a lot of stress and worry with a very slippery cloth out of the oven to try and slide my loaf into it where I realized, probably proved up a little bit too much where I was faffing around with everything else and forgot my timings for the day. That's why I spread a little bit. And in this moment, I could have, and potentially should have, played it safe and took my grignette and done small cuts, lots of little small cuts so as not to disturb the structure too much to hopefully enable my slightly overproofed dough to rise to its full potential in the oven without collapsing. However, I threw caution to the wind and I did one big long slash down the middle to see if I could get away with it. 
I spritzed the inside to encourage that steam and put the lid back on the top where I then placed it very, very carefully back into the oven for the first 20 minutes lid on and the second 20 minutes lid off exactly like the other one. And here it is when it came out, I was quite pleased with this one because um, we got that burst on the top. Despite the fact that it was slightly overproved because we baked in a contained environment, we did actually get a nice burst on top, slightly squat loaf, but still, that's a great success in my eyes. I'm really pleased with it. The cool thing about these is that they are um, effectively Dutch ovens that you can see inside, which is pretty wicked, isn't it? And if you've got one already, well then you're already set, aren't you? In terms of whether it's best to preheat it or not, I feel like both these loaves are complete success and to, uh, in favour of ruling out the faff of scorching, screaming hot glass pans and slippery oven gloves, I'd probably just do it in the cold one, either of these cold, because I couldn't really see any uh, noticeable benefit to heating one up in the first place. They both come up lovely. The hot one made me feel uneasy, more uneasy than the other one anyway. So then, why would I? Plus you save time in preheating the thing in the first place. Bonus. So how about glassware as a, as a whole? Well, hey, it works and we've seen the proof, uh, haven't we? It just makes me feel uneasy inside. And that's something I have to work on personally with my psychiatrist. If you have these at home, uh, then use them. If you don't have them, but you can win them on Patreon for free, well then do that. If you see them in the car boot sale and you fancy giving them a go or a charity shop, well, pick them up if they're like a couple of quid. Would I order one in the post to use it? Probably not. It is neat and fun to see the bread rising up inside of this thing. Uh, that's probably the biggest selling point for me. This one, pointless. They look a little bit like they're from the past, don't they? And they kind of are. I don't know if people use this stuff anymore, do they? What do you use it for? Do you use it for stuff? Have you got one at home that you use for a lasagna? Let me know, because I don't know. I don't have this stuff at home. Weirds me right out. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to Patrons for continually supporting this uh, channel and um, keep your eyes peeled on the feed for a little competition. You could win one of these. Sent to your home. Hopefully that is smashing. In the post. <laughs> thank you as always. I hope you learned something here today. Uh, and thanks to Amanda's Epoxy 7219 for the question. Nice one. See you soon. Bye bye.